welcome to Shari's Kitchen. I have been craving this homemade cinnamon bread for a while, so I thought I'd get up this morning and make it and share my recipe with you. So it always, as always, you start with your warm water and add a package or a tablespoon of yeast. To share a couple of ideas about this bread. So it's a cinnamon raisin bread and I love cranberries. So I tend to add cranberries and raisins. So when I first start my baking for the morning is I'll put the raisins and cranberries in a bowl and cover them with water and let them sit for a while. It kind of plumps them up and makes them mix into the dough. The other thing that is really nice about this recipe is that I always add nuts and I prefer walnuts in this recipe, but nuts are completely optional. Again, your preference. So it can become your own bread, however you like it. It's a very sweet, moist bread that's wonderful, just sliced and buttered. It also is great toasted and we've even had it as French toast. So it's, it's a favorite in our house. All right, we've let the yeast proof for just a few minutes to get it activated, and now we're gonna add the remaining ingredients. And we're gonna start with the warm milk and butter. So I warmed up the milk and the butter in the microwave. I'm gonna add that in. And then a couple cups of flour. We'll probably use up to six cups. And then a little salt. And I always add some sugar to my cinnamon. It just keeps it from clumping. So we're gonna sprinkle that on. And this is another uh, part of the recipe I really like. I mix the cinnamon all in the dough versus making it as a layer. So I just mix that in. Give it a stir. And kind of the same with the nuts and the raisins and cranberries. I like it mixed in the whole, uh, throughout the whole bread and not just in a layer. And as always, I like to spread my fruit in the flour so it doesn't clump. flour to my counter. Our dough is nice and formed and you can see it has a little bit of a spring to it when you touch it. And then I wanted to share another trick from my mom. Uh, use your uh, wrap from your butter, leave a little butter on there, and you coat your bowl with your butter and then put your dough in and kind of flip it around so it's covered with butter. And then we're gonna let it sit for probably an hour, an hour and a half. We want it to double in bulk. So we'll be back to put it into loaves. It's been about an hour and 20 minutes. And so let's see what our dough looks like. Uh, this is perfect. So you can see it's risen to the top of the bowl. And this is gonna depend on the time of year, how warm your kitchen is, but it is important that you let the dough double because we're gonna make two loaves of bread. 
So we'll take this out. And I go ahead and split it in two at this point. I've got my two pieces here and I'm just gonna spend just a minute giving them um, a, a need and some shaping. So here's our two loaves. Like I said, we kind of sh shape them into the size of our pan. And then I'm gonna use my same trick with my butter and butter up my pans. Have our two pans ready to go. If you have the option to put these on top of an oven to raise the second time, that would be helpful. If not, you just want to cover them with a cloth and somewhere that doesn't have any kind of a draft. And we want the, the dough to rise to the top of the pan. So I'm going to go ahead and set my oven to 400 and let them sit on top. Uh, while it's preheating. It could be 30 minutes to an hour to rise the second time depending on the warmth of your kitchen. So let's do that and then put them in the oven. I've taken the, this beautiful bread out of the oven. I ended up baking it for 25 minutes and then I checked it and flipped it around so it's a nice uh, golden brown. Now what I do a lot of times is I'll melt butter and paint the top of it and that'll keep the crust really soft or you can just use it like this. So you'll see, uh, let me cut a slice. Oh, it is so good. And don't forget to make French toast. Subscribe to my channel. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.